What's the point of vibe coding if I still have to pay a dev to fix it? Now, I saw Primogen retweet this and I wanted to check it out. Because mainly, I want to see what people have to say about this. And I have my own opinions I'm going to share about it. So, I'm also going to try to be charitable. I think there are use cases for vibe coding. So let's dive into it. What's the point of vibe coding if at the end of the day, I still got to pay a dev to look at the code anyway? Sure, it feels kind of cool while I'm typing, like I'm in some flow state or whatever, but when stuff breaks, it's just dead weight. I can't vibe my way through debugging. I can't ship anything that actually matters. And then I'm back to square one, pulling out my wallet for someone who actually knows what they're doing. Makes me think vibe coding is just role play for guys who want to feel like hackers without doing the hard part. Am I missing something here or is it really just useless once you step outside the fantasy? I love this. <laughs> um, before I give my opinions, I just want to check out some of the comments. So I'm going to look at the best ones and then controversial ones. You have discovered the Achilles heel of vibe coding. Great for mockups, terrible for production code. A higher developer once the concept is proven. Yep. I agree. The point of vibe coding is to make a dev's media work take less time, not code an app for somebody who can't support it to ship. And so you need to have some experience to know what you can outsource, but even then, professional developers that rely on this too much, you have to expect atrophy. So you really need to be careful about the what you choose to outsource to an LLM and the frequency in which you do that. Do people think vibe coding means not knowing anything about software? Yes. <laughs> I mean, like anything about software, what do you mean by that? Building software? Yes. This is what vibe coding essentially is. And if you don't like that definition of vibe coding, <laughs> you shouldn't have use that term you dumbass i like i don't know what to tell you why did you call it vibe coding if you want it like if you want something like paired with making developers more productive you shouldn't have called it vibe coding there is no shortcut to hard work if it was true everyone would be a millionaire if it was that easy to build products then every software engineer would be jobless by now true uh vibe well it, it would shift. Uh, but yeah, mostly true. Vibe coders have just scratched the surface of a product dev, and it's not even 0.1% of what actually goes behind the scenes. Developing a good product takes a lot of planning. It is very complex to develop a big product. Vibe coders don't understand that because they haven't seen how complex a system can get. People who have spent years of hard work are not clowns to spend so many thousands of hours learning and making mistakes and building something. Vibe coders can make all the jokes about software engineers losing their jobs, but reality won't change with LLMs. You have to spend midnight oil learning the concepts to actually build something that makes sense. Okay, so we are going to read a couple more, and we're just going to get past the base comments, and then we're going to go into the controversial ones, the interesting ones. You're realizing that the hype isn't everything it's cracked up to be. This is why people say that, well, AI is awesome, it's got a long way to go. True, these are actually reasonable comments. Um... I'm sure there are comments dunking on vibe coders, right? And deservedly so, because the hype around software engineers losing their jobs took off way too much. Vibe coders deserve to be shit on. Obviously, not all vibe coders, and a lot of a lot of vibe coders are starting to be reasonable, and some have been reasonable and realistic about it. But I think sometimes. I think some of that is also because people got a little bit too cocky in the beginning and now there's a lot of pushback. Now there's a reality check and now they're saying like more realistic things about what vibe coding can achieve. So there are some people that were realistic from the beginning, but most of those people were already developers. I understand what you mean. The guys that say you should be able to debug, ignore them. Debugging is hard when you are not an engineer. Well, you shouldn't ignore them. That's a good statement. The bigger app you try to do, you yo get exponentially more errors. In short, what 
This is a point of vibe coding. Look at Lovable's homepage. They say it's meant for prototypes and front end type apps. Not very complex ones. Um, but I mean, there is an argument to be made. There are a lot of people building React apps, and LLMs are getting a lot better at that. React isn't going to be as marketable. Um, I think the React jobs, I got to look at the graph. I'm just spitting this out, um, out of nowhere, but I remember seeing a graph that kind of showed React jobs slowly waning over time while like Angular jobs were actually increasing. Um, I got to look at that, but a lot of people want to just learn React and try to get a dev position. It's extremely competitive. A lot of people are trying to get into it without a solid foundation. That's a different conversation, but LLMs can do pretty good with React. And maybe some other frameworks that are more difficult, not they don't do so well with. And maybe that's where you can get a marketing edge. They say it's meant for prototypes and front-end apps, not back-ends, APIs, databases, storage. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't trust using an app that's been vibe-coded when, that when you use an LLM to build out the back-end. There's no way in hell I'd trust that app. I wouldn't give my credit card information. I wouldn't give any tokens or authenticate anything. I wouldn't add any integrations. There, there's no way in hell I would risk any of my accounts for an app that has been vibe-coded. To be fair, there have been some indie hackers that really don't care to have a solid foundation to make sure that their app is secure. I'm hoping... <laughs> that you're at least outsourcing that to kind of a serverless solution. But even then, you can look at serverless solutions that have been compromised and that you can't trust. What's the solution? Just get better at backend and build it yourself. But indie hackers are going to do what indie hackers have done for a very long time. So let's go ahead and go to controversial. And then I'll read some comments with this, and then I'll share my opinions. Become better at prompting. <laughs> Just, I, I love the controversial filter. It is so good on Reddit. Just get better at prompting, because that <laughs> will solve everything. If you don't know how to vibe code successfully, you're getting bugs. Listen, you just got to get better at prompt engineering. You want to call yourself an engineer? No, 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 no. Let me go ahead and share my favorite prompt engineering course with you. You will be more hireable than any other software engineer. You just got to get better at prompting, bro. Like that That's all it is. Just get better at prompting. It's a skill issue. Thank you for your honesty. To be frank, as someone who has many years in the industry and uses Copilot, sometimes as occasionally more expedient and context aware, Google Stack Overflow that I dis disregard 50% of the time due to BS output. I feel like you're confirming in real time what everyone with experience has been saying all along. I sincerely hope you can find a way to use this as a starting point to actually learn your way around the code. That's a really good use case for vibe coding. Now, I don't like the idea of you getting so tangled up in your app with so many bugs and then you decide to learn to code just to try to fix those bugs when when you don't really build a solid foundation that's going to be really difficult. Most people are going to give up with that. It may not be some glamorous fantasy or whatever, but actually learning how things work will be satisfying and increase your own confidence. You don't say. You can still get a lot of useful assistance from code generation and chatbots, but it'll feel good to be able to strike it out of your own too. Anything truly worth doing is worth struggling through when it's hard, in my opinion. Vibe coding is a toy made for developers, not technical people. Should avoid it, since for them it is just a waste of money and time. Then why are... <sighs> that? That's not how it's being advertised to people. To be fair, a lot of people that aren't developers are getting a lot of marketing around they could build these apps without being a developer. So is it really a toy for developers? Is that how it's being marketed? I don't think so. Sometimes it is. But <laughs> no, like a lot of people are just getting inaccurate marketing. Uh, what the fuck do you mean 
you can't debug it. What on earth do you think vibe coding actually means? This is just you not knowing how to vibe coding. LLMs are great at debugging. Wait, give me... <laughs> okay, hold on. I wanted to wait for my thoughts because I, I actually want to share this in my thoughts afterwards. But are people, like, are people seared? I don't know if this is, like, satire. What on earth do you think vibe coding... What does vibe coding mean to you, Harvard Med? I wonder how people define vibe coding in their own head. My definition of vibe coding is just letting the AI create while you are descriptive in what you want created without worrying about the code, without knowing about the code. That's vibe coding. What do you think it means? How are you supposed to vibe code to make this work? Vibe coding is a way for money to go from your wallet to those poor companies. This is true. Why is this controversial? Vibe coding is about crafting the product experience, reducing activation energy. Okay, this is real. Hold on. Vibe coding is about crafting the product experience, reducing activation energy, enabling flow state. The best vibe coders I've seen turn off the code window and focus on chat. Mock-up UX. Sooner rather than later, the code will become viable for production. Because we all know that the longer you vibe code and the more you build up that context and you just keep talking in that, that chat window, the experience just gets better. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. That's enough. That's plenty. Um, all right, so I have to just come clean. I love watching vibe coders. I do. I think they're more entertaining when they live stream it than programmers. I think they're more entertaining than Primogen. I said it. I do. You ever watch a league streamer? If you play league long enough, especially like with a long duration in like one sitting. There's this thing that happens with your mind where it starts melting, right? And you can see the control over your emotions wither. And it just withers away. League streamers, maybe about like a couple hours in, start getting more irritated. They start kind of raging out cussing and they start losing their shit i love those streams it's a guilty pleasure of mine to watch league streamers lose their shit maybe that's a toxic trait of mine i don't know but i see the same pattern with vibe coders and i love it it starts out feeling confident feeling sure of themselves they have a good idea or what they think is a good idea and they're just vibing out you know it's just vibes man they're just talking to the chat they don't have to worry about the code oh there's a little bug yeah there's a bug go ahead and fix that oh great thank you so much cool so let's go on to the next feature oh two bugs okay we'll spend a little bit more time we'll fix both of these bugs okay perfect all right so let's move on to this next feature okay so now i want you to build this feature and I want you to like really go through your code and, and double check and go ahead and I'll, I'll come back. I got to get some coffee. You know, this has been pretty stressful. We're just kind of whew, mental, mentally like whew, it's, it's really draining. I, I need, I need a break. All right. So I'm going to tell you what to do. Come back. They come back. Their first feature is broken. Okay. Go ahead and Fix the first feature. That's okay. Bugs are created. This is part of the software process. This is what developers experience. We're just vibing, right? Okay. So that gets fixed. Well, at least the AI tells you it gets fixed. And then you check it. What do you mean it's fixed? It's not working. Fucking AI. No. Like, this element needs to do this thing when it's clicked, right? It needs to pop up a modal. No modal has popped up. AI says, oh, of course, yes, I see it now. And let me go ahead and fix this for you. Check it again. The modal pops up, and then it just disappears. 
No, the modal needs to stay on the screen. AI, the modal needs to stay on the screen until I click the X in the top right. It gets so much worse <laughs> as you go along until you have the buggiest application you can possibly have. And you only get there more slowly if you dump a bunch of money into good models, but you will get there as your application grows. And you just see the sanity in that vibe coder slowly wither away. They start raging out, they start cussing, they start getting mad at the AI, and I am loving it. If I had popcorn, I would be eating it the entire time. I love watching vibe coders rage out. Happens every single time. It's wonderful. It's amazing. I fully support vibe code streams. Like I said, they're the most entertaining coding streams I've seen. But if you are serious about building an application, they are very limiting. Any developer that has like tested out the agentic flow and just given more control to LLMs with a larger code base typically knows that they need to make sure everything's committed. We're good. Don't give it access to Git. <laughs> Because I think that's an option, right? You can give it access to Git and make commits and edit commits. I think it's interesting to watch an LLM just go at it. But when you have a large enough code base, you your code base is littered with bugs. When you give it, when you try to give it the context with general prompts to investigate on its own with the code base so you don't really have to think about it. Prompts get better when you can create targeted prompts because you have knowledge as a dev. The experience gets better. Targeted bug fixes, targeted feature development can work, and it can work really well when you have that knowledge as a developer. That's not vibe coding. <laughs> vibe coding is just a fuck it mentality. Good luck, have fun. YOLO it. I'll come back with my coffee and we will build this thing, AI. It, it, it's just a joke. I don't know how there are some people still hyping up vibe coding as anything more than just a quick prototype builder for non-devs or like really small applications, to-do list applications. I don't know if people are being disingenuous. I don't know if people are jealous of software engineers. I don't know if people are mad because they never became a developer. And so they justify just switching to vibe coding because it's going to replace all software engineers because you never became a good developer in the first place. I don't know what it is that continues to push this narrative that developers are going to be replaced anytime soon. It's just dumb. And when people say that, I instantly lose respect for them because they are just dumb. I that's that's how I see vibe coders often. There are good vibe coders that understand the limitations, but they're just the select few that ruin it for the rest of you. And you don't understand the dumb messages developers see every single day because social media chooses to push it in our algorithms no matter how much we try to curate it. It just keeps popping up, keeps popping up. The AI hype keeps popping up over and over and over. You want to know why developers spend so much time shitting on AI in general? That's why. <laughs> so I think we can all agree algorithms, social media algorithms, can go fuck themselves.